The following is a Goulash Media production. Goulashmedia.net Welcome to the system is done. In a world where breakfast cereals and Saturday morning cartoons are being canceled left and right because they lean neither left nor right and are assumed to lean left or right or they lean too hard left or right and are accused of pandering to said left or right, one show stands above them all to change the world one uncomfortable conversation at a time and have the conversations that your family prays you don't bring up around the Thanksgiving dinner table. This is that show. What's up, Downers? Welcome back to the least comfortable show on the web. The system is down, where we talk about the uncomfortable topics like conspiracies, politics, and religion. If you're new here, you can find the person who invited you. Give him a big hashtag me too, kiss on the mouth, and slap on the rear because you're going to enjoy it. And if you are one of the many people who tune in every Monday morning for your weekly dose of discomfort, welcome back. It's all, it's a pleasure having you, as always. Today's conversation um, is, is my conversation with some black dude named Carl Pierce. Now, uh, Carl's a, a friend from childhood, from uh, all, the, all the bands and all. We had ran in similar friends groups and stuff like that, so we've got a lot of history there. But... Um, I actually did not plan to have this conversation based around what's currently happening in the world with all the the riots and protests and the George Floyd murder and stuff like that. That wasn't my intention. I actually hit up Carl, I think, about a year ago to have this conversation, and we just never pinned down a time. But uh, I, I thought that now seems like a good time. It seems like a good time to just have the the open dialogue conversation from two guys who grew up basically in the same town both small little white towns neighboring each other and um me as a a white dude and him as a black dude i thought it would be uh good to you know get his take on things and his experiences and of course we get into all the the current events as well and thoughts on that um and we'll get into that here in a moment but before we do i gotta remind you guys about the downers club the Downers Club is what gets you all of the the bonus content every single week. Things like the extended uh, conversation of the, the the director's cut of my conversation with Carl Pierce, where we dig even deeper, get a little funner, get a little looser, a little edgier, perhaps. Um, talk about a, a lot more things because there's a lot to discuss in this topic. If you want to hear that, if you want to hear all the other shows that we do every week, you can uh, join the Downers Club, join the family and support the show by going to patreon.com forward slash the system is down. That's the name of our show. Um, yeah. Patreon.com forward slash the system is down because, you know, YouTube completely demonetized us and we have no way of make money making money at this point outside of Patreon. We're looking into, I say we, but I am looking into other ways to more effectively have programs um, to support the show. But uh, for now, it is patreon.com forward slash the system is down. Check it out. Also, uh, if you're not familiar with our sponsor, today's show is sponsored by Brave Botanicals. Brave Botanicals has Kratom. Fantastic Kratom. If you're not familiar with Kratom, you can try it for free at Brave Botanicals. Uh, freeounceofkratom.com or mybravebotanicals.com. Enter the promo code TSID. For me, Kratom just helps me be uh, more alert and more focused and chill during my days. It helps me get a lot more work done as I work at home. So check it out, freeounceofkratom.com, promo code TSID. That promo code also will get you 5% off of your order, uh, whatever it is, your, your whole shopping cart, 5% off with promo code TSID. I highly recommend the White Borneo Kratom. Check it out, freeonceofkratom.com. All right, let's get into what you're here for. This is a, a time, a very sensitive time, where it's uh, potentially more important ever to you know have these conversations, change the world one uncomfortable conversation at a time, as I always say, and uh Be humble and listen to somebody from a different walk of life than you. So that's what we're doing. Carl Pierce, ready, set, go. Let's get weird. My guest today is some black guy, Carl Pierce. 
<laughs> Carl, I don't have any other qualifi- any other qualifiers for you, but uh, that, that's really all that matters right now. Um, uh, <laughs> a friend of uh, mine, a friend of the show for a very long time since childhood, Carl, uh, how's it going, man? Oh, it's going well. Going well. Good, good. And, um, you know, a, a lot of people have been, like, encouraging different people of different color. They need to just sit down and have these conversations here out the other side and yada, yada. Um, I, I, I say the same thing. And I think it is very important. And to be clear, uh, this conversation is not sparked from current events. I've been talking to you about having you on to have this conversation for like a year now. Correct? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so not just me saying, hey, I've got a black friend, too. Um, <laughs> I, I've been wanting to get your thoughts on uh, you growing up in kind of a smaller white uh, rural city. Or town, even if you can even call it a city, but uh, as a as a black dude, and uh, I think it's important to get these conversations out there and let people see like some uh, individuals' experiences rather than what the media is painting everything out to be. But and to clarify, you do not speak for all black people, correct? <laughs> that that is very correct. That was. <laughs> I wanted to make sure <laughs> they, they have not elected you as their spokesperson. <laughs> no, I am. I'd make a terrible one. <laughs> it's all good. So Carl, give a, give a little bit of background just on you, where you come from and like what, what you do, who you are. Um, so I, I am from Mercer County, small town in Mercer County. Uh, grew up until I was like, 20 in that little small cornfield area. Mm -hmm. Um, Currently now, I mean, I live in the Quad City, so it's not like, uh, it's not too much bigger, but I mean, yeah, it's bigger. It's bigger from where it was relative. It's not a Mecca, but uh, it's it's not a cornfield either. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And you you moved out to uh, Chicago for a while too, right? I did. I did. Cool. Gotcha. We will get into that a little bit here, but um, what uh, political leanings really shouldn't matter in this, but I'm curious as to what yours are uh, as far as like how people can frame your responses and stuff like that. Um, I would say as in like on the spectrum, Mm -hmm. I would say I'm more, on the liberal side, sure. I I, I don't I don't or I I hate the idea of like being like Democrat Republican liberal conservative. I like to say I'm a moderate, but sure. some people say I'm a little bit more liberal. <laughs> <laughs> right on, gotcha. Uh, so cool. Um, so it's, tell me about uh, like your your upbringing, um, the people around you, the people in your family. Uh, what was it like? Well, um, I had the unique experience of growing up mostly um, with my my white half, my white family. So mm-hmm. um, that's the kind of culture I, I was mostly part of. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, I mean, um, growing up uh, with my mom, I had a stepdad. Uh, I lived with my grandparents for a while, like. Um, it was a good thing. I, I don't know if this is just race based, but uh, um, yeah. So um, I did uh, have my dad. I saw him every once in a while, but um, he was jumping around, so I didn't really get to know that side of the family sure. super well. Yeah. And being uh, you know a, minor, a minority in a small, mostly white town, um, well, did you experience? Uh, I mean, people would assume that there was a lot, uh, an overabundance of racism. Um, was that the case, or what was your experience? Um, I mean, there are, there are, because you are a minority and you aren't the majority, like, there, there are, like, micro, microaggressions. Mm-hmm. My label that I grew up, I didn't even recognize them as like microaggressions. Like it was just a ha joke. Yeah. I mean, um, I don't know when I, as I got older, the more I reflected on it, I did have a desire to want to fit in. I don't, I didn't want to be excluded or anything like that. 
And it, I, I, I would assume it came from just the subconscious I, uh, acknowledgement that there was something different about me. I feel most people have that, though. Sure. Mine just happened to be from race. But because of that, I, I use my race as a way of breaking ice mm-hmm. sometimes, mm-hmm. ironically. So. Sure. In, in what way? Um, I might make uh, a joke or uh, I'm trying to think of uh, a good example. Um, oh, like, um, like if I was around, like some people, someone to be like, Hey, who's the black guy? And I'd be like, black guy, where? Or something like that. Like, just... Right. So, so but, you're kind of like lessening the situation, uh, by making kind of racial jokes. Do yeah, you, yeah. do you, do you have a problem with race jokes now? Do you see it differently or do you like regret acting that way personally? Um, I mean, the ideal version of me would be more conscious of that, but I mean, hindsight's twenty twenty. Sure. So, but um, directly me personally, most of the time, no, I don't have a problem with it. Mm-hmm. It's more how that would affect other people. Sure. So, um, on on the topic of like racial jokes and stuff like that, yeah. do you think that? I mean. You were around uh, like uh, a lot of the, we were both around a lot of the same people and we would make yeah. jokes uh, for me. I would make raci- racial racist jokes out of the absurdity of the idea of racism, like right. uh, not obviously because I think lesser of that person, but because I think lesser of the person who actually thinks that the joke is a serious thing. Um, I don't I don't know. We just live in such a different culture now where it's like. You know, you can be judged immediately as a racist based off of the use of one word or the use of one phrase, uh, regardless of, you know, your intentions. You can be called a racist. Do you, do you think that that's appropriate? Like if somebody went back to you and if you had Twitter at the age of 10 or 15 and you're making some dumb racist joke, should you be allowed to be canceled today for something you said then? Uh, hmm. Um... It's it's very strange coming into the spotlight because, yeah, um, like if you were uh, a big presence like that, it's it's a very fickle situation because of you, uh, you are responsible for the things in your past. I don't know if canceling or um, like uh, the cancel culture or anything like that is, I don't know. I'm, I'm really, that's a really hard thing to put a, uh, my thumb on. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's, it's just, uh, you're, uh, people are coming out as more transparent than what, um, they were, uh, originally shown. And I, I mean, like if that would be something that wasn't, uh, on brand with some of these companies or anything like that, Mm-hmm. I mean, I can kind of understand that. Yeah. But as far as jokes, though, jokes are jokes are one of those things where I'm just like, if it's if it's in a joke setting meant to be a joke, then mm-hmm. like you said, like it's about the absurdity of it, not the actual idea. Like, I mean, I'm not going to take political like take directly a uh, comedian says as like, Oh yeah, that's their right. moral standings and everything like that. Right. And, and I think it kind of depends on, you know, your connection with that person. Like if you overheard somebody making a racist joke and you didn't know them, you could, it'd be easy to say, Hey, that person's obviously a racist, but the person that they're talking to might understand that that's a joke based on, you know, their connection to each other and their understanding of each other. Um, right. so that's, that's where it gets kind of tricky, especially on like social media or even with like podcasting and stuff like that. Somebody can go back and dig up shit that I've said on the show and say, oh, this guy's obviously a racist based on this one line that he said. But it's like you have to listen to the entire expansion of what I have said and the way I have you know carried myself before you actually jump to that conclusion based off of one line. Do you agree? Yeah, I, I would. I would definitely agree. 
I mean, uh, we see it a lot in social media where people take the snippets of um, the point that they want yeah. to push. And then people counterpoint with another small portion of that. And no one's looking at the whole thing. Right. Do, do you think it's like, do you think it's better to err on the side of shut that person down because they might be a racist or better to let them speak their mind and prove it? To shut them down. Like kicking somebody right off of Twitter for saying something that could be interpreted as racist, but it, you know, if you heard them out, it might be something else. Like, is it better to just say, well, cut that person off Twitter? Let's not. Like, I think racists should be all over Twitter. They should be allowed to make idiots of themselves, and we should be able to write them off instead of shutting them down so that we know and we can educate people to be better people. <laughs> um, I, I wouldn't agree with that. Like, um, <laughs> I, I would just say um, at that point, you're giving them a platform to express more of their hate, though it's like bringing them into the uh, limelight. It's also allowing other people to rally behind those thoughts. Possibly. But my concern with shutting people down like that is like if you kick them off, they just get angrier and then they get more of a following because then they're a martyr <laughs> and then they move on to some other platform and people pay more attention to them than if you let them be stupid in public. Well, most of the times wouldn't those, uh, like when they have to be kicked off their martyrs, they create like the subcultures, but they, they don't have traction. They don't get traction until they have a platform to gain a following on, to gain yeah. more support. Yeah. But there's always going to be some platform that they can move to. And I don't know. I just think it's better to shine a light on shitty people than it is to, uh, let them fester in the darkness and, um, <laughs> you know, build their own community. I would rather have a, a bunch of people. I would rather have them be able to be on Twitter and everybody to call them out for their bullshit in public and make them look like idiots than for them to build their little echo chamber and continue having their own stupid thoughts. Yeah, definitely. Um, I, I, I don't have, I don't have any evidence or anything to support, uh, like why the, uh, that wouldn't be a good idea. I, I'm just going off of a gut sure. feeling of what I see, um, and what I've seen with like, especially the more transparent. I mean, on my social media, I I try to keep such a wide variety of people coming in, so I can see different viewpoints, different ideas, and everything like that. There yeah. are a few things that do shut it down: racism, homophobia, things like that. Yeah, those are the things that. Stop. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I'm I'm not fans, <laughs> but uh, so let's get back to your story a little bit. Uh, you yeah. grew up in this little town. Um, you eventually what what took you out to the Chicagoland area? Um, so I I was I'm not built for um being out with so much area. I, I don't like having not a lot of neighbors and everything like that. I'm pretty sociable. So mm -hmm. I I always knew I wanted to move to a city. Um, I went to college in uh, the Bloomington Normal area, uh, came back to the Quad Cities. But then when I had an opportunity to go to a big city, I, I knew I wanted to go to like um, Chicago, L.A., uh, Houston, some, somewhere that was densely populated. Mm -hmm. And I had that opportunity. Uh, my brother got a job up there. I got a job offer to be able to work from home. So I was like, wow, this is perfect. So yeah. I went up there and tried to make it. Yeah. And how how is the culture different there in the big city compared to around here? Um, it It's completely, it was completely foreign to me compared to um, everything I knew, knew before. Actually living there, it's... Um, it's a lot more, you're around a lot more people, but at the same time, you are still by yourself. Mm -hmm. Like no one's talking to each, uh, to each other. Like you're just in a large pro proximity around people. At least that was my experience. Sure. Very good. How long were you, how long were you up there? About a year and a half. Okay. So it was less like communal where everybody kind of knows everybody yeah. and like there's a, a larger group of people, but 
it was possibly even more secluded because you weren't like plugged into the the neighborhood as you were in right. Maryland. Okay. Yeah. Did you see any any differences in like uh, racial inclusion or racism or anything like that compared to Viola? Um, it, that was that was another definite aspect of it to be able to be in a community that wasn't um, the neighborhood that we were living in were, wasn't um, majority white. So that mm-hmm. was an experience for me. I've never never got to live in an area like that. So it was. Um, uh, it was cool to see the cultural differences of those areas. And um, again, like we, we weren't talking to each other, but there was a solidarity in the aspect I felt of like uh, the races and neighborhood protection and future mm-hmm. um, gentrification's going on all over the city up there. So yeah, so, uh, neighborhoods are getting destroyed and rebuilt for, fancier nicer places so sure. and that's really sad to see the we those cultural areas yeah gotcha did you experience any like outside of like the gentrification stuff like that did you experience any like um like you talked about there it was mostly like microaggressions and stuff like that in viola did you experience any face-to-face racism with anybody like walking down the street or anything like that in chicago no okay in chicago no um they're that would require someone to actually like talk to you. That wasn't, uh, <laughs> you don't experience racism if you don't talk to anybody. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I guess I, I take that back. There was, there was one lady, um, that she clearly wasn't, uh, mentally all there. Like there's a really bad, uh, a mental health issue in Chicago, but mm-hmm. yeah, she started going into a little bit of a racist rant on the, uh, train until she was eventually kicked off. Yeah. Um, but that that was the only bit of racism that I really <laughs> saw. The open racism. Yes. I saw Meth is a hell of a drug. Um, it yeah. can turn the best of us into a racist, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, so I, I did mean to touch on the microaggressions and stuff you talked about in Viola. Can you give examples of that? I know that a lot of the 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 right leaning folks will just be like microaggressions these these little sissies and their micro do you want to like expand on what you mean by that? <laughs> um, I mean like it's uh, it's things just um, as far as addressing like uh, how tan I am like uh, just coming up and uh, like feeling my hair just feeling sure. that openness to go in there or just uh, put their hands next to me and be like oh wow. I get that. Um, yeah, I get brown, brown than that, or I don't get that brown in the summer, or whatever. Right. Yeah, I, I I can only imagine that there's plenty of that around here with a bunch of, and and I'm it's, sure a lot of it's well-meaning people that yeah. just don't. I mean, they they're not trying to be racist. They're just like, oh, hey, we're different. Hey, look at that. Like, yeah. was that the case? Did you ever experience anything that was like? That you, that you felt was actually against your black. I mean, obviously it's 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 uncouth and it's encroaching on your space and uh, not uh, you know caring about boundaries. But was it ever like anything more than that? Um. Yeah. There were there were some instances in high school. Um, people did take it to a very race negative place. Put it nicely. Um, <laughs> I got called the N word in um, school a couple times by a uh, few people. I mean, the school did their best to like just like shut it down, right? Because I mean, like there there were only maybe uh, three black kids in high mm-hmm. school at any time, and maybe uh, twelve people of color. Yeah, but um, at a yeah, school I mean, of about how many, or a class of about how many? Uh, my graduating class was 123, 24. Okay. So, um, the whole high school is probably maybe around like 600, mm-hmm. 650. Gotcha. So. And were these guys, uh, I mean, they were aggressively using the use of the, the N word? Like it wasn't yeah. like, okay, gotcha. Yeah, it was targeted at me and mm-hmm. um, it was. 
a uh, in our cafeteria area. I mean, this was before classes started, but uh, there are enough people there. I mean, looking back, it is kind of weird that, <laughs> like, I had a few people who rallied behind me that were just like, "Hey, no, you don't, you, you don't need to take that. You need to go tell the principal or something like that." Yeah. Yeah. You're breaking up a little bit. Um, so you said that it was weird, weird that uh, what just that you accepted it as kind of the norm and didn't think too much about it. No, um, that there were, I mean, like there were probably about 80, 90 kids around at the time. A few of them were like, yeah, um, uh, go tell the principal. But uh, there, there were a large majority who were just like, wow, this is really awkward. We're just not going to say anything. I mean, right. like, sure. Yeah, and I, I imagine with a, a predominantly white area and kids being kids, a lot of them are just yeah. like, "What do we do? What do we do right now? This right. this isn't okay." But you know, it's not something that we've ever had to stand up against before. <laughs> right. uh, so, do you think that um, obviously we can all agree the N word is bad? Now, there are some stupid people who still use it. Hmm. Do you do you think that the word in itself is racist to use that word? Um, like, for example, if somebody said, if there was just like a really, uh, culturally not woke hillbilly who was like, man, I love the blacks. These N words are the best people I've ever met. Is that racist? Uh, cause uh, it just seems like in our society, we're really quick to write people off as racist without thinking about their, their intentions behind what they're saying. And if a person's like, I love these people, but they're using the wrong words, is that, uh, is that, I mean, obviously it's not couth, but is it passable? <laughs> well, I mean, like if, if they, um, if they were to make that statement, like, ah, oh, man, I, I love black people and everything like that, they would probably be aware that that is a word that harbors a lot of sure. uh, negative connotation behind it. So I, I wouldn't see a reason why they would use uh, choose to use that word. Um, I mean, there's the whole uh, taking the word back aspect of it, and mm -hmm. um, that. I mean, I don't. I believe that world uh, word has been tied to a negative meaning. Of course. And I, I don't. I don't. I, I, I wouldn't use it. I, yeah. I suggest other people not to use it. To be, to be. Clear. I'm not endorsing the use of the word. Right. Oh no, no, no! I didn't take it as that. <laughs> yeah. Um, just I don't know. For me, it's like everything is so put in a box these days. Like you're either uh, you're either a liberal commie who wants to burn down America, or uh, or who just, even in the context of this, you're either a, a Black Lives person who thinks that there's no riots going on. Like CNN will make it seem like everything is super peaceful, or you're a right wing guy who thinks. You know, they're just burning the country to the ground. Like, there's no middle box where it's like, right. maybe there's nuance in every single thing and we're not all inside of a box. Maybe it's not, you know, you're either black or you're white. Maybe there's, or you're not racist or you're, you know, anti-white. I don't know. Like, there's just so many nuances that are just completely glossed over because everybody's quick to put people in boxes and labels. Yeah. Um, I hate boxes. I hate boundaries. I hate... Um, labels. I I don't think it's a it's a fair assessment of uh, humans or uh, society as a whole. I think we're, we we as creatures are above that. Mm -hmm. We try to be categorized. I mean, like we try to do that. That's how we find comfort. But yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't agree with that. Yeah. I feel like that causes more issues. So, what are your thoughts on? what's going on right now in the country? I know that that's a very broad question, but um, with this whole movement that's happening right now, where, where do you stand on all of it? Um, for the most part, I, I, I am in complete of most of what's going on. I mean, um, I, I, I support the protests. Mm -hmm. I understand the rioting. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I, 
I'm not a person who is um, who's a cab at all. I, mm-hmm. I don't I don't support that. I I believe that there are good cops, but the good cops are far and few between. Sure. And uh, as a libertarian, I would push for the idea that, and I've asked this question on our forum and stuff like that, like in the, the discussion of are there good cops, they there might be good people who happen to be cops, but if there are laws on the books that are unjust that they're enforcing, even in my opinion, to the extent of like seatbelt laws or, you know, laws that don't actually affect protecting anybody, um, like, can they enforce that and still be a quote unquote good cop? Is there such thing as a good cop? And this is completely off off base from what we're talking about because it has nothing to do with race, really. But uh, do you think that there can be good cops if some laws are unjust and they're being enforced? Um. So, in the in the terms of justice, I I, I go off of what what are lawful orders what have been chosen in our areas by our elected officials that um, are chosen by a um, majority typically as the laws of the land. And as long as the officers are willing to uh, agree to only, only abide by those and the constitution, I believe they'd be good cops. But um, if there, if there are cops who are, unjust on their forces and they're not openly coming out in opposition of them or in, if they are aware of any kind of issues and they're trying to protect their brothers that does make them bad cops sure gotcha now what are your thoughts on uh on drug laws as a libertarian i think no victim no crime you should be able to put in your body what you want and i think that uh the war on drugs has severely crippled a lot of the black community because it puts these people into, I mean, somebody uh, in their home smoking weed in certain states still can be thrown in a cage for just chilling and eating Doritos. Um, do you think that that is uh, justice? Uh, no, no, that, that uh, especially that example. No, that's, that's not justice. Um, I mean, yeah, what is it? Uh, Louisiana, if you're on your third offense, you can face like 20 to life mm-hmm. for a nonviolent uh, drug crime. Yeah. Or just possession. Right. Which is absolutely insane. Mm-hmm. Um, but as far as all, um, and, and you're saying like whatever drugs. You I want, think so. Uh, Until you harm somebody else. I mean, obviously, if you're taking drugs and abusing children, you don't need drugs to abuse children. Abusing children is a crime. So you, you know, you enact punishment on where it comes in, into harming somebody else or their property. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, um, and that and, and, and that, yeah, I'd be like, yeah, do, do what you do, what you want. <laughs> I, I, I don't. Yeah. I don't have a problem with that. Um, as long as we have proper education on um, what's going on, I mean, um, I don't, I don't know where it's at now. I know Canada had that um, open area where um, they had people where if you had heroin, they had nurses there to help you sure. make sure you don't OD and everything like that. Yeah, yeah, and I, I believe that taxation is theft, taking people's money without their permission. But if they're going to take my money, I would much prefer that it go towards educating people and helping people to sobriety than instead of throwing them in cages for having certain substances in their possession. <laughs> but that doesn't make money. That is- <laughs> <laughs> and that's, that's the problem. <laughs> uh, uh, it does not help with our, uh, our for-profit prisons. So that's where uh, you're speaking my language. All right. Hey guys, this is Dan's wife, Kayla. I just wanted to interrupt this podcast to let you know that he puts a lot of work into it for currently no monetary profit. And he has a family to feed. To do so, he runs his own media business called Goulash Media. Dan has a crazy creative brain that makes him uniquely able to take your project, whatever it may be, and make it the full package. 
So whether you're in need of graphic design, logos, branding, commercials, wedding videos, podcast jingles, music production, music videos, merchandise, websites, pictures, or what have you, contact Dan and he'll seriously make you look and sound awesome. For more information, just go to goulashmedia.net. That's goulash, G-O-U-L-A-S-H, media.net, where Dan caters to the little guy with the big vision. So uh, on the topic of like Black Lives Matter, jumping back to that, um, is it acceptable? Because you coming from this area, you could probably see better than a lot of people, like the side of the people who are like, oh, Black Lives Matter is a bad organization because these things are being done in their name. I'm not saying that it is. I'm saying a lot of people have concerns in this area because they see like the violence, the rioting, the looting and stuff like that that are being done in the name of Black Lives Matter. Um, is it is it okay for somebody to support an idea, to be completely anti-racist vocally, and to support the idea of Black Lives Matter as a concept, but not to support hashtag Black Lives Matter or BlackLivesMatter.com or whatever the organization is? How do you support uh, Black Lives Matter without, like, I guess openly... Supporting well, it. supporting the idea that black lives do indeed matter, but not supporting the name and the the business of Black Lives Matter because of some of the, the things that uh, they have done under that name. I suppose, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, I do believe, yeah, you can uh, support the ideals of it without necessarily supporting the organization or the base of it. Yeah. Uh, like yeah. if you if you had a business called, I don't know, um, stop murder, stop murdering people. That's what it was called. Stop murdering people, and uh, they they were selling drugs to children. Like <laughs> if people were telling you, hey, if you don't support everything that stop murdering children or whatever, I just said, if you don't support them, then you support murdering children. It's like no, I just don't support. Giving drugs to children. I don't even remember what my yeah. analogy was, but you get the point. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I, 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 I get where you come from. Then, yeah, yeah, absolutely. In that, in that aspect, I would, yeah. I would agree that you can support the ideal or the the idea of Black Lives Mattering. Yeah, and I think that's part of the the nuance that the media likes to ignore is that uh, a lot of these people who are like. I do not support this organization because that organization has a very good title that has very good meaning and very good intentions. Um, that makes you a racist for not supporting riots and looting and stuff that are done in their name. And not even to say that I don't know if that's what the the organization itself endorses, but things are being done under their name in that mm -hmm. capacity. So, For sure, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just my thoughts. Uh, and for me, I, I like to err on the side of, hey, Black Lives Matter. So if, if some people are co-opting it to mean something else, that's on them. Just like if people co-opted Christianity or something that I believe in. Like, I don't support the Westboro Baptist Church, obviously. <laughs> like, uh, that doesn't make me a, a lesser Christian or what have you because of something that shitty people have done under the name of Christianity. Right, right, exactly. Yeah. And at some point, I'm not asking you questions as much as statements, so feel free to interject. <laughs> no, no, you're fine. Um, I don't know. This um, this has definitely been a uh, situation for me because, again, like I had stated before, I, I was raised mostly by my um, white half. So mm -hmm. in that aspect, uh, there is a part of this that is foreign to me that I don't know is I, I I feel weird about because I'm like I'm supporting you though I don't know exactly everything that I never I didn't grow up in a black community I didn't grow up yeah. with seeing um so much of the injustice I mean I I wasn't even aware of even the idea of microaggressions or um that uh until I don't, I think my first sociology class. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, like I, I was living in a veil. I was living in like a, a bubble sure. and the more you get out there, you, the more you find out and everything like that. But, um, 
so yeah, I, I have to support, even though I may not understand, or I don't have to support, but I choose to support, though mm-hmm. I may not understand. Yeah, so. for sure. And this is not a statement. This is a question. Um, with things like microaggressions, the fact that you didn't see them as a problem when they were happening to you, you weren't offended by them. Yes. Yeah. Like, does that... How do I put this? Does that... Uh, if it doesn't matter to you, does it matter? Like, uh, obviously, if somebody else is offended by it, then they should speak out about it. But uh, for you, you weren't that offended by it when it was happening because you were in this bubble. Does that – should you go back and get victimhood points now that you have, you know, seen the light of that? <laughs> I'm trying not to be condescending in this, but no, like – No, no, no. <laughs> You're good. Um, no, I, I, especially victimhood points. No, yeah. it's, it, 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 it's not about that. It's more about the, um, uh, the ideals of, um, small, uh, implicit biases, um, sure. the, um, just subtle, subtle racism that still shows, shows up every once in a while, like no, nothing like the the most harmless kind of stuff is, or the most harmful kind of things are the small things that like uh, that do show racism in our system that go kind of under the radar. And again, like I again, I don't like you said, like they're not coming from places of malice or anything like that. But um, they can turn into that. I, again, I I feel like Mercer County's in a really really well placed when it comes to racial acceptance, racial uh, awareness and everything like that. Sure. Yeah. We don't have an ax to grind for the most part. So (laughs) whatever. Um, So yeah, a a lot of this obviously just comes out of a place of ignorance in a small town, especially when you're dealing with kids. But um, um, so do you think that, I don't know, I had a point and I've lost it now. Um, like for, for local people, do you, do you think that they should be held accountable for their ignorance? People in Mercer County causing these microaggressions, should the, they be, you know, should, should, is it just a, a thing where we need to say, Hey, stop fucking around with you know black people's hair and shit like that like just don't don't be a don't be dumb like is, is it that because obviously a lot of people online will jump to you know the the most outrageous things of like this person is a racist because of blank should, right. should we give people a little bit of a pass a little bit of leeway especially and this was the point i was gonna make like when we're talking about like um things like terminology and things like that like Terms have changed in definition pretty rapidly over the last yeah. few years. Like if somebody uses the phrase uh, like colored people rather than people of color, which is, I mean, by definition, those are the same terms. Uh, right. But one is offensive and one is not, even though we still have the NAACP, that is National Association Advancement of Colored People or whatever. Um, like the terminology changing and us little like small town folks can't keep up with it. And people online take that as racist if you say a term that was acceptable before. Like, what is the solution to that when it's just hard to even know what is acceptable to say? And I know, frankly, a lot of (laughs) small town white people who are like, is this which which thing am I supposed to say right now? Like, (laughs) we're trying to do the right thing, but it's it. I don't know. What's the solution? (laughs) Well, I mean, like, definitely, um, you you shouldn't attack people just right off the gate. I mean, you it it's better to correct someone, and especially um, like to be like, "Hey, it's actually this." And as long yeah. as you're willing to come to a point where you're just like, "Oh, I wasn't aware of that," but yeah, I'm willing to um, compromise on that, or mm-hmm. um, at least at least evolve. Or if you find something that is offensive, if you if, if you're uh, willing to do that, especially when it comes to race, like mm-hmm. that's, that's the best, the best solution I would, I would say. So people, um, both sides just chilling out and trying to yeah, meet in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, these are crazy concepts you're, you're putting out here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't it's know. Like, like, 
if you have a, a little old white lady, she could say, uh, she could say, you know, oh, I love these colored people. Or she could say, oh, these fucking people of color. Like, it, it's not the words. It's the way you're using the words that should really matter. Right. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, like, just being like, hey, Graham, Graham, um, they're actually people of color now. So that's how we have to use them. Yeah. Uh, what, are, what are your thoughts on... Um, We've got kind of a, and I don't even know if it's real or if it's just something the media has trumped up. Um, like the media is so hard to even know what it is true and what isn't anymore because it's all just pushing agendas. But uh, this whole concept of like white guilt, white shame, like people, every white person should be coming out and apologizing for things that white people have done in the past. Do you, and even celebrities like uh Aaron Paul and people like that just put out a video yeah. saying I take responsibility. It's like for what, bro? What it, did you do something? Like sh- are they right to do that? Are they right to feel that bad about their uh whiteness that they can't help? <laughs> um in the idea of like uh apologizing for something that you had never done. No, that's dumb. Uh, that's incredibly dumb. You shouldn't feel guilty about it uh if you acknowledge it. Like being like, oh yeah, that was that was a shitty thing. Our history had right. a shitty place. We're trying to move forward. I'm gonna do my best to do be the best person I can. I get that. Um, but I mean, like, if if you had done something in the past that yeah. was just like, oh man, that now I've come to a point where I've realized that's wrong, and I'm coming out and apologizing for that. Like mm-hmm. I'm like that's that's big kudos to you. Like sure. that's sure. evolution. Uh, that's healing. That's true healing. Yeah. So. And even in that aspect, I, I kind of think of it as like like these people who made dumb statements in the past that they don't even agree with now. It's like, I can apologize for what I said in the past, but it's really just apologizing for the fact that I didn't learn as quickly as somebody else did. Like, I, I may or may not have been doing it out of, like, if I wasn't doing it out of spite and doing it out of racism or doing it hatefully, then it's not necessarily something I feel like needs to be apologized for other than... I didn't know, and I'm sorry for not learning fast enough. Like, I I don't know. It's a weird situation. Obviously, if it's a hateful thing and you regret it, then apologize for it. But, you know, I don't know. Right. Um, I know I'm I'm uh, following the. I I don't I doubt you're aware of like the issues going on with Bon Appetit or anything like that. With like, what? Uh, bon Appetit. No. It's a uh, magazine owned by like the parent company of Vogue and everything like that. They do uh, YouTube videos and I, I love it. It's an awesome uh, show about cooking and everything like that. But um, it started um, last week. The uh, editor in chief came back in like 2009 or 2011, went to a party with his girlfriend in uh, a brown face, a Puerto Rican uh, brown face. Sure. And I was just like, Oh, um, like he he he's uh, dealing with that. I think they fired. He got ended up getting fired for that. But then mm-hmm. it, it brought to light. Um, bon Appetit actually uh, had a, a lot of their uh, people of color were getting underpaid or not paid for uh, video appearances or getting yeah just it was well, that's uh, a problem. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's it's been weird. Um, or it's been it's been uh, an interesting development coming out there and seeing how Bon Appetit is going to choose to handle this because the um, white co-stars that were getting paid um, uh, for their video appearances and everything like that, or like being able to make uh, food that wasn't necessarily based off of their ethnicity. Mm -hmm. um, We're we're just like, yeah, we didn't know this was going on. We are so sorry uh, about this. And um, we aren't putting out anything else until issue is resolved and everything like that like mm-hmm. um I, I brought that up for a point but i can't remember what it was. <laughs> uh, i was talking about uh like apologizing for things that you've done if they weren't mm. intended harmfully and you were just dumb <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right um and i mean like uh the editor-in-chief guy i guess maybe didn't mean for it to be offensive and i mean like you see that in like uh like um, those gangster parties that used to happen all the time or sure. theme parties where it wasn't purposely trying to 
offend a culture, but they had uh, tokenized it. They had uh, mm. uh, made it into a prop, like, and that that is that's not necessarily good. But um, <laughs> it's not ideal. Yeah. But is it uh, is it racist? I don't know. Mm. Probably in a way. <laughs> <laughs> um, on on the topic of you brought up like people in blackface and stuff like that. Now we've got, like, anybody puts any makeup on their face that's a, a shade too dark and they can be called a racist. Do you agree with that sentiment? Or, I mean, blackface originates from, obviously, like, the the minstrel shows where they were demeaning black people. Mm-hmm. If somebody is, like, doing something, maybe in... So, like, these influencers that <laughs> there were some... Uh, you know, articles written about where they come out in support of what's happening right now and they do it in very uh, tone-deaf ways by putting on quote-unquote blackface. Do you think that they're racist or just dumb? <laughs> yeah, that, that, that comes from, uh, again, a place of ignorance, not uh, racism. Yeah. Like, um, they, they, I view racism more as like, uh, or I guess like a hateful hateful aspect of it. It's not coming from a hateful aspect. It's coming from a uh, ignorant aspect. Mm-hmm. Um, like, um, who was it? The, uh, Nancy Pelosi and everyone who dressed up in the African garbs and yes. did, the, did the kneeling. Like, it's a big swing and a miss. <laughs> right. <laughs> so uh, you, you didn't take it as a as support of you? <laughs> um... I mean, even if there Honestly, wasn't the, that, the I, racial I like background, it was, it was so... Yes, that's what I was going to say. Even without the... I mean, people looked into the background of... I, I don't remember what it was, the tribe that it comes from, which has problematic culture and everything. Even without that, it's so so pandering, in my opinion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, I was like... I, 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 felt, I felt like they thought we were dumb. Yeah. And I was like... Man, like... <laughs> why, though? Yeah. Like, you could have knelt without, especially with the left being so on about appropriation and stuff like that. Like, what is your goal? Like, did you, like, did you workshop this idea with anybody before you walked out and did it on national television? (laughs) At this point, with everything going on, come on. (laughs) So, so I I just, go ahead. I was just going to say, I I just feel like the two party system is. Uh, becoming more and more apparent that just absolute disconnect that they're having with um, their citizens. Yeah, absolutely. So thoughts on the Democrats and people like Joe Biden saying, if you don't vote for me, you ain't black. <laughs> I, um, I, I, I don't, I don't, to put it nicely, I do not care for uh, Joe Biden. <laughs> that's about I, it I, that's much more nicely than i would have put it but, <laughs> yes. I, I i i unless something absolutely crazy were to happen i i will not be uh endorsing him on this upcoming election sure yeah and that, that's the thing at this uh this protest that we had here in alito the other night uh, several people stood up and said you know make sure if you agree with what we're saying here make sure you get out and vote I'm like, for who? (laughs) Like, who do you think is this big anti-racist out there right now? I mean, uh, the libertarian candidate, sure, but I have a a good feeling that nobody was actually talking about Joe Jorgensen. Uh, Mm -hmm. I feel like they were talking about Joe Biden, which, um, come on. (laughs) Like, sure, Donald Trump has done some stupid things and he's an idiot. Uh, Now, what are, how can you say vote for Joe Biden and not think the same thing about him? (laughs) Yeah, I, um, I mean, like, up until definitely recently, how he was cho- choosing uh, to um, voice his opinion as the leader and uh, the decisions he's making, the legislation he's pushing. Um, I would say, like, it, it, it is, if not the same, more of a threat to us with Joe Biden as yeah. president than it would be Donald Trump for another four years. Yeah. And b- I'm not endorsing Trump here. I think they both suck. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. No. No. Me. Me neither. Me. me far. Far. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, 
uh, on the idea of like rewriting history and stuff like that. Like people are tearing down monuments. They're changing Disney movies for uh, racial insensitivity and stuff like that. They're they're basically trying to remove the existence of slavery from our past. Um, do you agree with that personally? Um, monuments of like, uh, I think there was, uh, there's a couple that are, uh, monuments just to KKK members. Right. Like, I mean, like I'm, I'm in complete support that, that, that should be labeled as a terrorist organization. Sure. Um, and like those monuments. Yeah. Like, yeah. Tear those down. Those don't need to be up there. Christopher Columbus, uh, ones. Yeah. They, they don't need to be up there. He's a terrible guy. Um, I mean, some of the, uh, um, generals and everything like that from the, uh, the civil war that those are the ones where I'm just like, well, hold on. Like, (laughs) I, I, I feel like that is, those were individuals that are part of history. And I, I don't know if this is what you're asking, but, um. I'm just kind of going with it. <laughs> <laughs> like, like these were individuals that I mean, like, do have history in those areas and everything like that. And an uh, argument could be established why those do have relevance and should not be torn down. Sure. Um, the idea of like uh, going back into cartoons and taking that stuff out. I mean, I, I, I don't, I don't think it's it should be done. I think we, we should leave that in there. We should leave that transparent for a similar reason why you were arguing about um, social media and having uh, hate speech or uh, people who have radical, bad, morally bad ideas sure. have a place to do that. Yeah, like because you, you can't erase that. You can't erase the trail of tears. You can't erase that. Like that's stuff that we did, but that we've grown from. Right. We're not celebrating it. We're acknowledging that it happened yeah. and how bad of a thing it was. Even like Whoopi Goldberg came out and said something about, uh, she was talking about Song of the South and she was like, absolutely Disney should be putting this movie out there. It should be out there. First of all, it's not, I mean, it's kind of flowering up slavery and stuff like that, but it's not like endorsing it necessarily. And uh, mm. I mean, it's not specifically hate, hateful racist rhetoric and it's acknowledging that something happened in our history and she's like we sh- we cannot forget about what happened otherwise we might end up making the same mistakes in the future and so yeah. like yes i i don't think first off i i don't think that uh, any monument should be erected by uh taxpayer dollars to begin with but to any person um, <laughs> but uh yeah anything glorifying it i can certainly agree with you know, let's let's all agree. Let's let's get that out of there. But let's let's stop trying to erase it and stop trying to forget about it happening. Um, otherwise, yeah. you know, history repeats itself potentially. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'd completely agree with that. Yeah. Well, uh, thoughts on reparations? Um. If you're saying just like a cash uh, cash payout to uh, uh, people of color, or, um, like black people, indigenous people, I mean, like I guess I can't speak for indigenous people. Like I mean, like they they've had it so so rough. Like they, I just that that's it's just absolutely awful. Um, so I will speak on the <laughs> my opinions <laughs> on. Um, uh, black people. Um, I don't believe it should be a cat cash payout or anything like that. I think um, there are issues in our system that we can, we could label as reparations that we could help build these. Uh, we could focus more directly on these uh, black areas that have been affected by uh, generations of uh, redlining, uh, gentrification. Um, sure. I, I, I think that's where we need to start uh, focusing on um, allow uh, building up communities and building up um, resources for uh, people of color to have better uh, or I, I guess even even if we used it as um, retraining of 
failures in our system, uh, police force, uh, employment, everything like that, right. where there are uh, those biases that uh, do make it uh, unfair or uh, make it just completely statistically um, not equal. Well, not not equal is not the right word for it. Um, just, just not fair. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Um, in our society, but no, I, I don't, I don't think that we should like pay out. Mm -hmm. I think that's. So that, like building up the areas of predominantly black communities and stuff like that to help them out of poverty rather than saying, Hey, here's a check that takes care of it. That, you know, that makes history better. <laughs> right. Oh, I mean, um, it's, it, that, that's just an idea that just doesn't make any sense. Why would we, why would we pay people uh, for something that didn't happen to them. Like um, what did happen to them was they had to grow up in a society that was affected mm -hmm. by, by that. Like they, right. they, they grew up uh, in an area that, I mean, like you said, like uh, drugs rampant, um, crimes rampant um, because uh, I mean like over, over police, over incarceration. Yeah. So in building up these communities or with reparations and stuff like that, um, who are, are you proposing that like taxpayer dollars go towards building up these communities or how do you, how do you solve that? Because obviously if it's just taxpayer money, then it's the black community is also paying for <laughs> their reparations. <laughs> well, their it's taxes. not, it, 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 it's not a matter of, uh, "Quote unquote," white people playing, paying for black people's communities to do that. It's um, these are the sins of uh, America, sure. and America needs to do that. So, yeah, I mean, if you want to look at it, it, uh, it, it may be black dollars going towards that, but it's also uh, Asian dollars, Hispanic dollars, uh, Latino dollars, like who are, just American dollars are going towards building up um, to try to fix try to heal mm -hmm. uh a wound yeah been festering for 300 years <laughs> yeah it, it's tough um even at that point it's like how do you change people's minds like if somebody's a racist asshole no matter how good the black community has it they're still going to be a racist asshole <laughs> so it's yeah. it's tough i don't know how do you re-educate people without putting them in gulags <laughs> as Bernie's folks would say I kid I kid but some of them did but anyway <laughs> um I mean I, I I feel like we're uh we're consistently moving more as a society to a more aware a more empathetic uh, empathetic mm -hmm. society um it it's very slow moving, but I mean, we're, we're making progress and I feel like the ideals are, are moving in the right direction. So. Sure. Hopefully. Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. Um, well, uh, you know, we're, we're pushing close to an hour and I've still got plenty of other things I want to ask you about. If you're down, we can jump over into paid content and make people pay for this shit. Are you cool <laughs> yeah, with that? I'm with that? Yeah, I'm okay. good. Um, well, let's end on one more thing before we jump over to paid. Um, I personally like, and I want to touch on this more in the bonus, but my biggest issue is the way that this is portrayed in the media, the way that this is made into a strictly black versus white thing. Um, both sides seem to be pushing it subtly or blatantly. And I, I think that, um, obviously there's an issue there. There's an issue with black, black dudes getting shot by cops, but, um, there's an issue with white dudes getting shot by cops. I'm not saying all lives matter. All lives do matter, but I'm not saying that uh, to overtake this conversation. But right. the issue, in my opinion, is the media intentionally creating diversity or not diversity, division between us and uh, not us not focusing on the real problem, which is fixing the cops, fixing the system, fixing the places that it's broken in every aspect. Um, do you have any thoughts on that? Do you have any final thoughts that you'd like to say on all of these stupid matters? Yeah. Um, so I, I don't know if they're trying to necessarily cause division. Um, they've just realized that they make more money 
uh, it's a much more marketable aspect to sell uh, black versus white. It's, yeah. Uh, they, they, they profit from that. They get more views, they get more advertisement revenue. Um, and that, that, that's what we see in the media is they're going to, uh, skew it. They're going to flower up. They're going to, um, over dramatize issues Mm -hmm. to the, uh, to what best markets to keep people, uh, viewing, keep watching, keep those eyes on their screen because, um, Especially on like a televisional front, like uh, it's it's going downhill. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> if you're not making the move over to uh, the internet, I mean. right? So, what's the difference between that and pushing for division? <laughs> I mean, if they're go- only putting the spicy stuff out there, the the racial issue stuff out there in the most inflammatory ways possible, in order to drive numbers, is there a difference between that and you know pushing for division? I mean, yeah, I, I would say uh, division is a symptom of their um, of what they're doing. I again, I I feel like the cause is um, the ability to make money. So okay. yeah, it, it, in that yeah, uh, it does cause division. Mm-hmm. But I mean, like we saw that we saw it also in um, the uh, the virus. And everything mm-hmm. like that. Like, I mean, like, I, I don't take me wrong. I take that very seriously. But I mean, like, they they went above and beyond. They were caught on several occasions, um, just over uh, over animating it and making it seem a lot a lot worse than it was. Because yeah, they were playing on people's fear, people's fear uh, to try to keep up with what was going on, everything like that, right. guys on their screens. Absolutely. Fear sells and it sells like hotcakes right now. But uh, <laughs> Carl, it's been fun. Any final thoughts? Uh, anything that you'd like to say to your your evil white brethren or anybody out there? who, uh, <laughs> um, You know, speak once more for the black population, won't you? Um, I, I will say this. Um, go out there and have conversations. I mean, get off. Get off the uh, Facebook threads, the uh, the Twitter messages, and everything like that, and just go go out, have a beer, have a coffee, have have something, talk to someone instead of just trying to make a quick uh, yell in a mess a message bubble, trying to get it under two hundred and fifty characters or whatever, <laughs> and actually just like have a conversation with them, meet them where they're at, and uh, be willing to. Be, uh, be met too. Absolutely. Anything you'd like to promote? I don't even know what you're up to these days, but uh, anything you want to put out there? Um, I mean, I I help out uh, with Near Dark Studios. They do. Uh, we do tabletop gaming and some streaming services on Twitch and YouTube. Um, we are trying to get subscribers to um, <clears throat> get monetized, but um, yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you want to stop over there. Cool. And where can they find that? Um, uh, YouTube.com backslash Near Dark Studios and uh, Twitch TV backslash Near Dark Studios. Awesome. Well, Carl, it's been a blast as always. And uh, we'll talk to you more in the bonus content. But thanks for being here, man. Hey, no problem. Dun, 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 dun. Hey guys, thanks for sticking around to the end. I hope you enjoyed my conversation with Carl Pierce as much as I did. And I did. I did enough that we uh, we continued this conversation for, I think, close to another hour in the bonus, the director's cut. If you'd like to check out the director's cut and all of our extended episodes, our extended conversations, and a bunch more bonus every single week, go to patreon.com forward slash the system is down and sign up for the Downers Club. Join the family, join the fun, join the cult, or whatever you want to call it. But uh, it's a little bit more... Um, a little bit more free game over uh, behind the paywall. It, it's like the uh, the Wild West, but without the the killing of natives. But uh, a lot more loosey goosey back there. So go check it out at patreon.com forward slash the system is down and help the show get bigger and better and more beautiful every week. Um, also, if you are not a member of the forum, come on into the system is down forum. It's currently on Facebook or you can find it by going to tsidpod.com forward slash forum. Uh, Carl Pierce is in there. Carl Pierce. I don't know why my mouth's not working this morning, 
Carl Pierce is in the forum if you'd like to talk to him. Uh, most of the guests that we have on the show do end up in the forum. So if there's anybody that you have questions for, a lot of times you can find them there. Um, tsidpod.com forward slash forum. What else do we got going on? Uh, be sure to like, share, and subscribe on all the platforms. Your Facebooks, your Gabs, your Minds, your Twitters, your YouTubes, your huge tubes. Most of these platforms don't like us very much because we have these uh, open dialogue conversations that can sometimes get sticky. Um, so help us out by beating, helping us beat the algorithms by clicking a couple buttons, leaving a couple reviews, and um, letting people know uh, that this is a place worth coming. This is a place uh, for... Enjoying good old-fashioned, old-style conversations and uh, doing so civilly without shouting into the void on Facebook. Now, we also have QAnon Chronicles with Scott McElroy every Friday, wherever you're listening to this. I need to reset up the YouTube link. I don't think it's been posting to YouTube automatically like it's supposed to, so I need to look into that. But uh, you can find it on all the podcast platforms at least just by going to the system is down or you can go to cubanonchronicles.com i need to update that as well it's been sitting stagnant anyway qanon chronicle qanon chronicles every friday wherever you're listening to this most likely you can find that there with scott mcilroy as he digs into current events and things in the news and does so through the q conspiracy lens all right i think that's about it for today uh the protest last week as you probably already know went very well i put out a little uh documentary short type of thing um it's about an eight ten minute long video just recapping my experience at the the protest showing a little bit of both sides showing the kind of showing the good and the bad in each one and trying to be fair and unbiased just recapping what i saw so check that out on our youtube or facebook um, it is called Black Lives Hashtag Black Lives Matter at Home, Alito, Illinois. So check that out. And um, yeah, the the protest went well. There was, you know, the, there was some quote unquote counter protests, but uh, you know, some some of the people on that side say that they did not approve of the the flying of the rebel the rebel flag. But uh, you know, it I don't know. It, it good conversations to be had by all and i'm not going to do it as much justice as the video did so do check out the video anyway that's it that's it that's all um i'm supposed to be talking to uh i, I, don't, I don't want to say it I, I don't like to say who i'm supposed to be talking to in advance because if it doesn't happen then you'll be let down but fun conversation about a certain uh convict right now uh, a certain person that is in jail wrongfully right now uh, i'm supposed to be talking with his mother coming up soon so i'm looking forward to that i hope you are too i hope you stick around i hope you tune in next monday morning for some more uncomfortable content as always and until then continue to uh question everything stay uncomfortable and i'll talk to you then thanks this has been a goulash media production goulashmedia.net this concludes our broadcast day click